Hey everybody, in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create sequenced animation using the repeater. Now the repeater takes one thing you've made and makes a bunch of copies. And a bunch of people have asked me in my other tutorials, can you offset the animation you've made and then repeat it in time so that it happens one after the other? Short answer is no with a but. And this is the butt, not, I mean, there's no butts in this video, so. Anyway, we've covered sequencing layers in another tutorial, so this is not that. This is all within the repeater, and it's gonna be pretty awesome. Let's get into After Effects, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here in After Effects, we're gonna be creating these sequenced animations where parts follow each other on in either an exponential or a linear type of expression. So, to do this, usually, I would have had you go, animation, keyframe assistant, and then sequence some layers. So you would have animated a layer and then sequenced them out and then changed some stuff about them. But we can do this with very few layers, in this case two, although I could have done it on one. And within that, not, I mean, not all of these keyframes are important. So let me start from scratch and show you what we're doing. Go ahead and make a new composition of any size, frame rate, whatever, who cares? And now we're gonna create a new shape layer. And on this shape layer, I wanna put down, uh, if we're doing that circle thing, I guess I'll put down a circle first, so you can do that. Uh, I just double clicked on that, and then it puts an ellipse group in here, and that ellipse group is filled with the path, a stroke, a fill, and some transform properties. Going into the ellipse path here, I'm just going to change this down to be uh, kind of symmetrical. So that's a good size. I'm happy with this. I also want to cut a wedge out of it. Now you can do this many ways, but I prefer to just use the path tool. So I'm going to just uh, throw the grid on here. You know, here's you know the middle of the grid right there. So we're going to go view, snap to grid, make sure that's on. Uh, hit G to call up your pen tool, and then uh, just start clicking around here. Boop, boop, boop. Triangle accomplished. That's anyway. Just use the grid to line up your triangle so that yours is, you know, positioned in the center and equilateral and all that. Whatever. Cool. Okay. So we've got a shape and an ellipse. I'm going to take this path, and drag it down here so that it is under the ellipse path. Kill that first shape, or delete it, whatever. You know, like murdering anything. Now we're gonna add a merge paths, and that merge paths is going to be an intersect. So where this intersects with this, we have this. So that's what we're left with is this wonderful piece of pie. Mm, pie. So now we are going to add a repeater. And now I'm gonna twirl down into the repeater as we can see here, the number of copies is three. I don't really know how many copies we need at this point. So now I'm just gonna go down here and under position, set that to zero. And then under rotation, I'm gonna increase this just until no more lines are visible. So in this case, it's 29. So this is a good time to talk about what the transform repeater options do. This is saying the next copy will be in this case, 29 degrees rotated from the last copy. So if I just keep adding copies, the next one is always 29 degrees away from it. All right. So it looks like I have an adjustment to make. Uh, let's see. Let me just grab this path here and uh, grab this and just, just bring this down a little bit to make that go away. Okay, we're good. So to create exponential animation, we need each thing to be slightly different than the one next to it, and I'm going to do that using the scale, all right? So we would assume that if scale runs from a zero all the way up, then it's going to do this kind of animation. So that's what we want to happen. That's what we're going to keyframe. The scale will start at zero. I'm just going to go ahead and 30 keyframes, maybe, and it's going to end at 100. That's kind of starting what we're after, good. But we also want the whole thing to animate on. So I'm gonna animate the size of this ellipse path to end here at 500, all right, and to start at zero, all right? So that one's coming up and all of them are coming up. And you see it kind of really speeds up towards the end, right? So it goes from here to here. Now that's because the size of this is going from, you know, this keyframe where it's 483, whatever, the next one is 500. That might seem linear in this expression of it. However, since each of these is gonna be 96.7 or whatever different from this one, 
as it goes down, you can see it sort of spirals in and becomes very abrupt. So on the next one, it's everything is 100% of that first thing. So if you don't ease these, then it's going to be very jarring. But already we kind of have the thing that we were after, right? Sort of. It's kind of working out. Now, you also may wish to add a rotation and scale to this. Here at the end, we have a rotation of zero and a scale of 100%. Cool. At the beginning here, uh, I think let's uh, crank this around to negative uh, 360. How does that look? Now let's go the other way. Let's go to uh, start at one and go around like this. Good. That's awesome. And we're going to start the scale off at zero. Okay. So all of it is wee coming up like that. So call up those properties and let's uh, run through what we've got real quick. You get this kind of slow ramping up happening and then it really snaps to at the end. So just take these last keyframes here and easy ease them. So that's, that's a bit more of a smoother out. Now let's really delve into this by looking at the graph editor. I pull that up by clicking this button here. And then if I want to zoom, I can just uh, check out the selection in the view or, you know, check out all of its points. And if your graph editor doesn't look like my graph editor, all you have to do is go here and uh, instead of a value graph, look at a speed graph and don't allow this thing to auto select your graph type. Just look at the speed graph. Meaning what we're getting into is an expression of the speed. So if this point is up high, it's going fast, and if it's down low, it's going slow. So let's grab these points here and drag them so that this point here is influencing this to be much slower in this section, all right? So it's coming on quickly, you know, and then slowing down as it achieves a full circle. Okay, perfect. Now. Ordinarily, this would have taken the number of layers that uh, we have pie pieces here. But in this case, we're able to create many, many more if we would like, or many, many fewer, or alter it around. It's just way more flexible when we do it this way, as opposed to the old create many layers, and then animation, sequence, whatever. Also, we've done this with a grand total of four keyframes, all right? That's very few keyframes for this number of individual things that are doing stuff. And it really just helps to keep your timeline nice and neat and tidy, you know? This is a circle, see? I just animated on one circle, whoop-de-woo. Now, people were asking me before if they're able to take an animation and then offset that in time. We're not really doing that, right? It's not like we've created one complex animation and then the next one is a couple seconds delayed and delayed and delayed. If you want to do that, use something like the echo effect, you know, just do that, go nuts. Uh, this is more for when you're animating shape layers and you want them to sort of come on in different ways. It, it can be very useful for motion graphics, for example, or transitions, and especially for transitioning from one type of background to another. So this has been something radial. Let's do something linear now. All right, so circle, you know, I think we're done. I'm done with you, Mr. Circle. Let's just uh, jack that scale all the way up like this. So, uh, you know, we can see what it's like if this uh, fills the whole screen. Whee! Oh, it's like falling down a giant infinite stairway. Let's say we then want to have uh, some, some squares or something. So let's create that new shape layer. Everything's on a shape layer. And, uh, you know, I just hit the uh, square bracket here to move the endpoint to right here. And, you know, let's, uh, let's make something new. And so we go here, take rectangle, boop, boop, rectangle. Awesome. We're going to need to do some stuff to the path here. Let's say we want to make a whole bunch of tiny wedges. All right, so we're going to take this and divide it by the number of slices we want to make. Let's make uh, 20 slices. That looks good. Okay, so we've done this. We are going to offset the position of this to be over here at the edge. I think that's uh, pretty good. Make sure that it's actually actually right over here at the edge. I'm just going to turn that grid off because I'm not really very interested in the grid at this moment. And now we need to create some copies. So we're going to add a repeater. And that repeater will need enough copies to go all the way across. Probably uh, 
you know, 20 copies, I guess, and transform that repeater. Well, we're going to be uh, 96 apart from each other. Cool. So that fills it up. We have our desired uh, end state of this thing. So we know that we want the scale to be here. We want the size and position just like this when it ends. So, you know, maybe we want the ending to be around here kind of thing. Awesome. Don't really need those properties linked. But back at the beginning, how do we want it to be? We want this to be scaled down to uh, zero, kind of like this at uh, zero. Awesome. Uh, and I think we would like this one to have its size here down at zero and its position to be at minus 960, all the way tucked in like that. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting on its own, right? That's kind of a weird, a weird looking thing. Maybe it's not exactly what we want. We can still transform on here things like the anchor point. So where the anchor point of this scaling operation is from. And uh, if we move this to minus 960, it's all the way at the edge. So it's like this kind of fades from the side. So, whoop. That's pretty interesting, hey? Interesting stuff, interesting stuff is happening. And it creates this awesome, I like it, it's kind of retro, like, blinds. All right, so we take these, let's easy ease those. How's that looking? Yeah, even better. What if I go ahead and I de-ease those and I ease these? Hmm, now we're getting interesting. What if I look at these things here in this tangled mess of nonsense and I take these end pieces and I go like this uh, things are getting things are getting neat now and we have a look at what that looks like I think that's looking you know pretty passable you know I'd I'd put my name on this so you can see how manipulating these very few keyframes can create huge variations in what you're looking at, right? See how this looks here at the midpoint? You know, if I have them all easy eased, it looks like that. If I start having these, you know, puff out, then it looks like that, and then like that, and then so on, and so on. So there are so many ways that you can tweak all of these things so that they get just a bit more interesting as you work with them. And one of the big ways to do that is to go in here to the graph editor, Make sure it's on that speed graph and screw around with the speed of these things. Now, you might be looking at, at this kind of thing and thinking, well, I can do that with the Venetian blinds. Well, you know what there, cowboy? You can't, okay? Because Venetian blinds happen all at the same time. This is for things that happen one thing at a time and have a relationship between them. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is transforming the thing that is being repeated is cool. Transforming the repeater itself is going to make that even cooler. I have two other tutorials that are about using the repeater and repeating a repeater, um, but I think this is what takes your repeating to the next level, so I guess those are kind of in a series, and I guess this is part three, where we add that final layer of understanding that messing around with the things in here is really good for you. Um, also, you know, just for your own business, check out what happens when you screw around with the uh, rotation. Wee, wow, wow, that's getting crazy. Anyway, I think, I think I've said enough. Uh, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial about creating sequential animations using the repeater. Just remember that the transform repeater is transforming each copy by these transform attributes, right? So you can see it a lot here in the rotation, right? So we go from zero to one. Each of these is one degree different than the last, and then to two, and three, and four, and five, so that at five degrees between each copy, you know, this is five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and so on, and it starts to form this curve. If you enjoy learning about visual effects and this kind of junk, then subscribe to this channel, because I'm trying to always put up new stuff here. Sometimes I take a long break and, you know, take care of my social life, but, you know, usually it's just the tutorials. And if you have questions about this tutorial, uh, ask me in the comments of this tutorial. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you around the internet.